I have to admit guys, when it comes to luxury purchases, I have made some big mistakes. Hi my loves, welcome back. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm gonna be sharing 10 luxury purchases, 10 expensive luxury purchases that I regret buying and I'm gonna be telling you why. Some of them are gonna shock you, some of them may not, but I want you to learn from my mistakes. So I hope you find this video helpful and funny too. So let's get started with the very first one. Okay, let's talk about a bag and this is a Chanel bag. So I am referring to this cute little pink mini. It's actually a seasonal bag and you might think, Mel, what's wrong with it? The color is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see, but actually on the logo, there's still the plastic on it. And let me tell you why I regret it. So I purchased this in Korea last year and I thought it was so, so cute. And you know what? The price was relatively good for Chanel standards because you know Chanel prices at the moment, crazy, crazy, crazy. And I loved it because it's got these heart charms, which I thought was so adorable. So when I tried it in store, I was like, oh, so cute, I love it. Plus the sales associate was so lovely. I recently brought this bag on travels with me. Spoiler alert, I have a special travel vlog coming up. So anyway, I brought this bag along because I want to love it. But whenever I was walking, I could see people kind of looking at me because I was just, you know, jingling jangling away. And I love hearts and these remind me of vintage ones. Another thing that I noticed is that this bag, even though I've only worn it a couple of times, I can tell, which I've mentioned before in my videos, the quality of Chanel's lambskin just isn't the same as it used to be. I think I showed in my soul vlog that I had to actually pick from a couple because there were already creases in the bag and this was the best of the lot, but you can see that already here there's little creases and I foresee that it could get worse. It doesn't feel plasticky or anything, but I just hope that it doesn't get worse. I know this bag was popular. Sometimes you don't know until you buy a bag, then you actually try it on, that it annoys you. Actually, I had a choice between this bag or the small classic flap, which you guys know is my favorite size, in the purple. I so regret not going for that. Would I have had to pay a bit more? Yes, but it would have retained its value better. It doesn't annoy me, it's proven. So for those reasons I just mentioned, I regret this bag. Next up is something from LV. Now I know a lot of you might be fans of these particular products, but I'm talking about logo scarves. And in particular, these two LV logo scarves. Now, I much prefer the LV logo scarves than, you know, that thinner one that pulls like crazy. There've been so many reviews on that, so I purposely didn't go for that. And I really liked the wool. I thought, yeah, I would love it. It's a neutral colorway. It's warm. It's cute. It's got its tag on there, so maybe I haven't worn this one. Oops. I don't know if it's just been the quiet luxury trend the last year or so, but I just have not worn this scarf. I have nothing against leopard. I actually like a little bit of leopard sometimes, but maybe I just think it's so logo-y. I thought I've worn this once, but clearly I haven't. I think it's a great wool scarf, but honestly, if I had to go back in time, I would pick a more kind of low key one. And this one here, you no know, hubby's not a fan. So that's number one. And then the other one, is this one and this one actually says Louis Vuitton. You can't miss this. I kind of thought it's going to look really nice. I like the fringe detail. It's kind of denim-y but you can clearly read that it's Louis Vuitton. Maybe it might not be that obvious. What do you think? Does it look that obvious? Very obvious. Okay, hubby's just come upstairs and said it's very obvious. Take it off. <laughs> so it's too logo-y and I, this one I have worn. So I think lesson learned, if I'm going to buy a designer scarf, don't make it so logo-y. 
because I will tell you, I do love my designer scarves. This one here, I think you've seen me wear this billions of times. This is a Dior scarf. You can't really tell it's Dior. It's got a stripe and it's got like a small Christian Dior here. But when I'm wearing it, it just looks like a really classy blue scarf with a stripe. Even hubby's borrowed this from me. So I think a better use of your hard-earned money is to buy scarves more like this. It might have a little logo, but it's not too flashy and not buy these blatantly obvious, expensive logo scarves. Okay, this one is going to shock you. I would say for the last 15 years, I have been collecting Chanel earrings, but not really for the last, I would say three years. And specifically my biggest regret and my most probably expensive over so many years is buying Chanel costume jewelry. Now these particular ones, you can kind of see a theme because they all have pearls. Now don't get me wrong, I think Chanel costume jewelry, some of them are so unique and I'm never gonna say never that I'm not going to buy Chanel earrings, but I have been buying way, way less. I think for a good 10 years, I used to buy like two or three pieces of costume jewelry each year. And I remember when I did my whole jewelry collection video, I'll link it above. A few of you made comments and said, Mel, instead of all your Chanel costume jewelry, you could have invested and bought some fine jewelry. And you know what? I admit it, you're right. These are not cheap. For example, I love these. They're a statement piece. Don't get me wrong, so cool. I bought these in Paris cost over $2,000, not even real pearls. For those of you that think that Chanel uses like real pearls, I hate to tell you, but they're just glass pearls. This one I did buy because I love the vintage version. I couldn't find it. So I ended up succumbing and buying it. So expensive again. I think this was 1,500. And it's not just Chanel. I mean, oh, another one. A lot of you said, do you even still own these, Mel? I do still own them, but have I worn them the last couple of years? No. And it's not just Chanel, it's Dior. I've got a lot of Dior Trebel earrings in uh, pearls, which are not real pearls again, all the different brands, but the majority of the ones in this tray, I would say 80% of them are Chanel. I love pearls, as you know, but I really do regret buying so many fake pearls. So you know that the last few years I have been investing in a lot more fine jewelry. And I really wanna tell you about actually investing in real cultured pearls. Even like really big brands like Tiffany or Mikimoto, which are known to have like the best quality pearls, all their pearls are cultured, but it still takes two to three years in, a, you know, whether it's a mussel or it's in an oyster to create freshwater pearls or saltwater pearls. Anyway, I wanna introduce you to a brand. It's called Gingerberry. And I am so, so impressed with their pearls. So I do want to thank Gingerberry for part sponsoring this section of the video. I am wearing some of their pieces. So all their pearls are either freshwater pearls or aquoia pearls, and they even have the rare South Sea pearls. The first one I want to show you are these dangly pearl earrings. So these are all freshwater pearls, but they use the highest quality freshwater pearls. They're called Aurora pearls and the luster of them are amazing. You know, I like my videos to be a little bit educational. Freshwater pearls generally are a little bit cheaper than saltwater pearls because in freshwater pearls, in the mussels, they can create like up to 20 pearls at a time. Whereas in, in saltwater pearls, like the Koya or the South Sea, each oyster can only create one pearl at a time. And it can range from like two to five years to even create a saltwater pearl. But what I love about these pearls is they just add instant glam to an outfit. But you know me, I love a two in one. So with these pearls, you can actually take the end off. I'll just quickly show you. And it becomes like a really simple stud. And I love that. So you get two earrings for like the price of one. You could even use this and put it on an existing chain you want and it becomes sort of like a lariat necklace. 
And you know what, when I was doing research on pearls, because I've been, you know how much I love pearls, I was looking at some of the designer brands, because let's face it, we do pay extra money because of the designer brand names. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is 18 karat gold freshwater pearls. Anyway, Tiffany have one, they have three freshwater pearls, and it is 825 USD. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna quote everything in USD, but these ones here only cost 196 US dollars because they have kindly given me, of course, I'm gonna always ask, the highest discount code. So if you put MIM18, you get 18% off everything site-wide. On top, they currently have just started their Black Friday offers. So this 196, it would actually probably end up being a bit cheaper. Mikimoto have actually got a very similar, sort of same concept two in one. Theirs cost $1,900 also in 18 karat gold. The difference is, yes, their pearls are the Akoya pearls, but even so, with these being the highest quality freshwater pearls, the luster is still gorgeous. But get the price difference, guys. Compared to the Mikimoto and this, you save a whopping 90%. And then likewise. So this just kind of looks like, you know, a simple pearl necklace, but is a two-in-one because you can wear it like this, or you can actually spread it out and it actually stays and it doesn't move. So let me just fix it up a little bit. Second look, you can just spread it out. You could layer it with your other favorite pieces or you can just bunch them all together like how I was wearing it in the first place. So talking about Mikimoto, you know how I was talking about Okoya pearls, these are also Akoya pearls. The Mikimoto version, it only has three. Theirs retails for 2,350 USD. This one, you get seven Akoya pearls. So these are the highest quality Japanese saltwater pearls. And this is only $409 with my MIM18 code. So that saves 82%. These are Akoya pearls. You can read up all about it. Please do your own research but I wanted to pick a range of Akoya pearls, of freshwater pearls, and then just on my finger, because I wanted to show you, I also picked a ring because I wanted to test it out. This is also in freshwater pearl. It's a double pearl ring and it's in sterling silver. I found a very similar one at Tiffany. Tiffany's one is $775, also sterling silver and freshwater pearl, but this one, it's only $122 with my MIM18 code. So it's like a huge, huge difference. So you really do pay for the brand name. So I'm just thinking to myself, I've wasted maybe more than 10,000, actually probably more than that on all fake pearls. So I'm really gonna be buying culture pearls from now on. I wanna show you a couple more because I wanna show you how luxe their packaging is. They even sent me a bag. I've actually worn this, but I wanted to show you the packaging, how it comes in. So luxe, grow grain ribbon, beautiful sort of box, like kind of what Van Cleef does. Beautiful Lux jewelry box. This is a very rare Akoya pearl that has a slight blue tinge. You know blue is my favorite color, but it's so subtle and so lustrous. Let me just put it on. How stunning does that look? Pearl necklaces are just for mature women. Isn't this a beautiful modern take? Did you know that this sort of ashy, sort of bluey gray pearl is really rare because normally when they culture the Akoya pearls, like the pink or the white, this blue sort of hue is natural. It's not dyed or anything. But don't think with pearls you have to dress it up. I've worn pearls with just t-shirts. You can wear pearls to work. It's so, so versatile. I love that they're really transparent. They have on their website and ranks everything. And this one is like a triple A grade, which means it's the highest quality grade Akoya pearl. So of course, I wanted the matching earrings. And these are also Akoya pearls. And they're in the same sort of like ashy blue color. This is the perfect medium sized pearl that goes with anything. And again, when I compared it in Mikimoto, you can actually select, you know, the grade of pearl, the size. So I selected the exact size, 7.5 millimeter, and not even the highest grade. And it cost like 1,450 USD. But these ones here, same exact size, 18 karat gold, retails for 311 USD after my MIM18 discount. I don't know about you, but as much as I love Mikimoto pearls, I have friends that own Mikimoto pearls. They have totally told me that it's the name that they're paying for. So if you want pearls that are just something a little bit different, go for this one. So love this set.
Clearly, you know I'm an earrings girl, as you could see from my tray of all my Chanel earrings. This one is actually one of their best sellers. For those of you that like sterling silver, this is actually a three-in-one earring. So beautiful sort of like little hoop with the freshwater pearl. You can take the pearl off and you can just wear little hoops like this. This little one you can wear as like a pendant. You can just attach it to one of the chains. I can understand why it's the best seller. If you want studs with a twist, I love these ones with the 18 karat gold bar nine millimeters fresh water pearl and it looks stunning this is quite statement enough i think without being too much as you know i've been getting into necklaces a lot more and i actually don't own that many pearl necklaces but i love this multi-strand pearl necklace isn't it so elegant but best of all this necklace you can wear it simply like this or you can actually change it into a lariat style i also saw a very similar one in tiffany but the tiffany one is sterling silver and it costs 725 usd whereas in this one is like 245 usd with my discount code so if you want like a multi-strand necklace go for this one and the final necklace which is super special it is the rarest out of all cultured pearls it's the south sea pearls actually fun fact australia is really known for their south sea pearls this is the golden south sea pearl how beautiful is it this gold color makes it so special mikimoto again have a very similar one which cost a whopping three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars but this one here also a golden south sea pearl only retails for 442 usd with my code this is a beautiful gift for yourself I mean, maybe as a Christmas present for a loved one. This is just a really, truly unique, elegant piece. Okay, so I've just put this necklace back on because I really like how it looks. I also forgot to mention that with every single purchase, you will get a certificate of authenticity with each of your pearl purchases. Okay, talking about jewelry. Again, this one you're gonna be, what the hell, Mel, are you serious? I think everyone, not everyone, but probably nearly every luxury influencer owns this piece. And just let me explain why I kind of regret it. I'm talking about my Cartier Four Diamond Bracelet. I bought this probably five years ago now, and I really do love it. But you need to know that this scratches like no tomorrow. Cartier does resurface it and they can make it all shiny again. But every time you do that, it takes a very thin layer of gold off. So there's only so many times you can do it. So either you live with the scratches or if you want it looking kind of like shiny and new, they need to like polish all the scratches off. And it doesn't matter if it's the plain gold version or the ones with diamonds, it scratches. I did have a slight issue with it, which I told you in an old YouTube video where it came undone and I nearly lost it a couple of times. Luckily, Cartier does have good customer service, so they did replace it for me, but that was a hassle. But I've heard that that's happened with a few other people. Now, the reason why I regret this is, I don't know about you, but I have been so guilty on settling for something because at that time, honestly, I could not afford it. But one piece I've always, always wanted from Cartier is the love bracelet. So it's not like I don't love the love bracelet, but I wish I bought the Parve diamond one. Does it cost a hell more? Yes, it does. But when it's Parve, it does protect it from or the scratches and with diamonds it's very easy you know to clean whereas in with this one unless i want to keep taking a layer of gold off it's not gonna look that great after maybe 20 years so i guess long-term investment wise and diamonds maybe probably are an investment though honestly you are paying for the cartier brand name i wish i had just saved up waited a little bit longer and got the full parve version if you're wanting a cartier bracelet i'm not saying you have to go parve version but just be aware that this scratches a lot like a lot a lot a lot and i don't know if people say that enough but it really really does so i don't mind it because i just wear it every day now it's been great cost per wear but i really wish i stuck to my guns and just got what i originally really wanted will i ever get it maybe one day but i have to save for it because cartier's had quite a lot of price increases you know the last few years and i think it's like 60 plus thousand so i might have to wait a while for that one now let's move on to my favorite brand, Hermes. It's not exempt. I've certainly made mistakes with Hermes. And this one is still in its box. I've shown this to you before. I have considered letting it go, but I'm talking about my medium Kelly wallet. 
It's so cute. The color is in blue at all. I think I bought it because of the color because let's face it, isn't it a gorgeous color? Like Hermes does the best colors. And it is a decent sized wallet. Like it has a number of card slots, place for your money, and it's really cute. Look, I even still have the protective little plastic thing on the lock. See, I have not used it. Two things why I regret this. One, this is super expensive. I think, I can't even remember how much I paid for it, but I couldn't find it on the Hermes website. I haven't seen it in store for a while, but I do know like maybe a year ago, they brought out the Kelly to go wallet because they always had the classic Kelly wallet. And then people were doing their own thing and putting a strap to it to make it a wallet. So then Hermes obviously brought out the wallet with a strap and it's not the easiest to get in and out of because you do need to, if you want to do it up, okay, if it's closed up, it looks like this, so cute. But then when you want to open it up, you're going to undo the clasp, open it up, get your money out. So you can, if you do love this design, just don't close it up and just leave it kind of undone. That's my little tip for you. But you know what? Since they do have, you know, those inserts that you can buy, I'm thinking maybe I could just somehow, I don't know if it would work with this, you can buy like an insert and then attach a strap to it, but then I would have to find a color strap that matches the blue at all. So it's not that functional for me because for my wallets, I really enjoy using my card holders as wallets. My daily use wallet is my YSL Chevron one, which I recently gave one away. Not to mention, as I said, I think it retails for over $4,000. But I could have put the money I paid for this into a bag. Like this is more expensive than a Picatin or a garden party. Look, everything I'm saying in this video is just my opinion but I wanted to give you warnings because if we all had a crystal ball, I'm sure some of us would rewind, go back and change some of our purchases. So to this day as not being used, I probably really should let it go. It is too beautiful to sit there in its little orange box. If you don't like a fiddly wallet, then this probably isn't for you. But if you love the Kelly and you love this color, then you'll probably love it. Plus if you can convert it, might be worth it, but for me, this was a costly mistake. Next up is a clothing piece. I don't know if I'm the only one that has done this, but I'm also a sucker for sales, though I am getting better. And I bought this cute little Balmain tweed skirt because I love tweed and I got it on sale and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's black, I can match it with so much stuff. It's still got the tags on there. And I bought it and the size is a little bit small for me, but me thinking like, oh no, I'll get it, you know? I just need to lose a couple of kilos. And let's be honest, after 40, it gets a lot harder to lose weight. So don't be like me, learn from my mistakes. Don't buy things just because they're on sale thinking you can fit into them because the chances are you won't. If anything, nowadays, I tend to buy things that are bigger because I don't mind it being a bit looser, oversized looks that are really on trend right now. I mean, not too oversized, but don't be so focused on what the number of the garment says. Buy what fits you, what's comfortable. This is too small. And as cute as it is, it's a waste because it's been sitting there in its box for a few years thinking, okay, will you lose weight to wear me now? And sadly, the answer has been no. So I have to admit, I'm a sucker for cute things. And especially I'm a sucker when LV brings out their limited edition Christmas animation. You've seen them a lot on Instagram at the moment. And I'm like, oh, it's so cute. I want it. No, Mel, do not buy it. Because let me show you. I have this one. I have this one. I've got this one. I've got this one. I've got some other charms. Do I use them very much? No, truth be told, a couple of these I haven't even touched at all. But at least I have actually let go of one of these. You know, progress Mel, progress. You definitely do not need every single animation that comes out. Every year LV is gonna bring out a cute little Vivienne animation. This one I was drawn to because it was Paris. Paris holds a special place, so I will keep this. I had to really stop Oh, actually, I might even have another one. Oh, 
I think I have a soul one. I was like, oh no, a soul is a special place, but I'm like, no, no more Mel. This year I'm refusing to buy any of the LV animation range as cute as they are because I just don't use them enough and they're always gonna be there. So unless I think you love, love it. Okay, let's let's be honest. If they had one with a cat, a cat that looked like Chino and Chai, I might get it. But other than that, I don't think, I think I'm done. I have plenty. I don't need so many of these. You can save your money. If I didn't buy all of this, this could definitely have bought a bag that I wanted. So those are expensive purchases. I also regret buying. So just think twice before you get sucked into the cuteness of them because I surely have been sucked in by how cute these are. So coming at number eight, I think this one, maybe some of you have also made the same mistake as me. Look, when we were in our 20s, maybe even early 30s, we could walk in heels that were higher. But as you get older, I feel like the heel heights kind of get lower. And so expensive things that I totally spent thousands of dollars on is designer shoes that are over four inches. I mean, here are just some examples. Yeah, I think these are like 12 centimeters, even though they're block heels, they're Gucci, love the design. Oh, but if they were just like 80, they would be perfect. I don't wear these anymore. These ones have got dust on them. Again, they're like 12 centimeters and I just don't wear them. And then you're gonna think these are the most hideous pair of shoes ever. I don't know why I bought them. Okay, I know why I bought them, they're on sale. I thought, oh yeah, Mel, they're different. You like flowers. I have not even worn these once, not once, look. and. Okay, they're kind of ugly, aren't they? Again, like 12 centimeters. I just can't walk in them. Comfort is playing more of an important part. That's not to say I don't like my pretty heels. I do have Manolo Blahniks that are 10 centimeters, but they're surprisingly comfortable. I have done a video where I've done, you know, comfortable designer heels that are actually worth your money. I'll link it above. But I would say for all those of my viewers that are watching, even if you're in your 20s or 30s, if there's an option to get the 110 centimeter heel or the 80, I promise you, you will not regret it if you get the 80 because longevity wise, you will get much more wear out of them. Your feet will thank you. They won't sit in your closet collecting dust years later. Those are just only a few of them. I have so much more. I did donate a lot of them to friends and family that can still walk in really high heels, but my, I love my shoes, but now I am totally sticking to my favorite heel height, which tends to be like sort of like the 60 to 80 millimeters height. I find them the most comfortable or even sometimes slightly lower, but no more 12 centimeter, four or five inch heels for me. Okay, so the next one is a bag and you know what? I totally forgot to show you this. This was another pearl Dior earring. It's in its box. Look, this has got all pearls. Is this Mel's style? No, I bought it because I thought I would be cool and cost me over a thousand. Anyway, diverting, that's just another pill example that was in its box. But what I wanna show you is this bag. It's in its box. I revealed it more than three years ago. I have not worn it. And I'm talking about the sack plait. I know, it's so cute. I love this style. Actually, to be honest, I really liked the vintage version and I was gonna hunt down the vintage version and then my SA was saying, do you know they're coming out with the mini one? Mini bags are still so on trend, but especially three years ago, they were so, so on trend. And this was so hot to get. I get sucked in with, oh, it's the last one in store. I don't know if that's always the case. Maybe it's just a sales pitch. But anyway, I got sucked in. I wanted to get it. I've never used it, guys. Look, it's actually faded into a beautiful honey patina just on its own. That's a plus. It's just such a shame. It's, I like the vertical shape. It just doesn't, look, it does fit a phone, to be fair, but it doesn't fit much in there. So this petite sack plait, as cute as it is, don't always buy things that is the hottest or when your sales associate says it's the last one. At that time, the price point was relatively okay, but it's still not relatively okay if you're not going to use it. So this one is another one I probably should let go because I'm sure there's a lot of people that want it. And now the price of this is like, I don't think it's doubled, but it's gone up like a lot. And this was, yeah, another lesson learned. And coming in at number 10, this is another expensive bag I bought 
In my Chanel Classic Flap Collection video, I did mention this is the least used of all my Chanel Classic Flaps. And I'm talking about this beauty. It is this beautiful medium classic flap. I think it's from 2011. It's sort of in a metallic-y finish, but it's a very, it's not material, it's a very special sort of metallic-y, I think it might be lambskin or calfskin. Beautiful champagne hardware, full set. As you know, my favorite size of the Chanel Classic Flap is the small. I do really like the medium, but the mediums I love, which I bought many moons ago, like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, is my pink, like my Sakura pink version and my white. So whenever I do wanna wear a medium classic flap, I always gravitate towards that one. But I am lucky enough that I do have an extensive Chanel classic flap collection, which luckily I bought many years ago because this full price now, a medium classic flap in the Chanel store is like $17,000. And this one is in excellent condition. And the reason why I regret this was because actually my mom had asked me to source a Chanel classic flap for her and she wanted something to wear to her dinners. And so I had sourced this from a Australian consignment store and I got it for a pretty good deal, like less than retail, but of course still Chanel classic flaps are very expensive because they do hold their value. And then my mom ended up getting another bag, but then I already had paid for this. And then so I didn't want to make my mom feel bad and feel like she had to return it. Then I thought, you know what? It's pretty, you know, I'll keep it. I'll pay for it. Don't get me wrong. I like it, but I didn't love it. Not like how I love my other two. So it was an expensive lesson for me because you should really only buy things you love. It's also a crying shame because this still costs me, yeah. A lot of money and it's beautiful i mean i know a lot of people would love this bag especially since this particular leather is very rare i don't think chanel has done something like this for many many years so it is pretty rare and it's the quilting is still puffy it's it's a beautiful bag so that is another bag that i do unfortunately regret I want to be completely honest with you guys because if you are thinking of buying any of the things I've mentioned, whether it be Chanel bags, scarves, to costume jewelry especially, just please think twice. Don't make the same mistakes as I did. It's better to invest in pieces that you truly love, even if it takes a little bit longer to save up for it. And especially with jewelry, you know I'm all into my fine jewelry now. Value-wise, they are worth more. Whereas in, you know, with costume jewelry, they're just gold-plated on brass. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it might've been a long one, but I thought it was important, especially on the jewelry category, since I spent I think the most money on that just to talk about it because I'm buying much more fine jewelry. I'm, you know, I always love pearls. So don't forget to use my exclusive code MIM18 if you were interested in getting any of those pieces. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have been like me and have made some luxury mistakes. Uh, what has been your biggest luxury mistakes? Let's learn together. Let's be smarter in our purchases. I'm still definitely learning, but I do think I'm getting a lot better. So have a fabulous day or night and I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys.